It's funny how when you're growing up, you don't even think about what it took for you to get here. I remember growing up, I used to tell my mom I never wanted to experience childbirth. I thought it sounded awful. <laughs> now I wish I could experience it more than anything, believe it or not. Growing up, you don't know what your journey to parenthood will look like. You have no reason to think about it. I was 17 when I was told I will never have the option to carry my own child. And it didn't really bother me back then. But this isn't a sad story. It's just an unconventional one. And although I've known since I was 17 that my journey would be different, you really don't know what it'll feel like until it's actually unfolding right before your eyes. I'm just feeling really frustrated right now. I don't know when we're gonna have kids. I am so excited to see what our children are gonna be like. We're here at the airport. Officially signed it. This is the start of something crazy. It's happening. You're probably wondering how we got here, so I'll start from the top. Life is unfair. Bad things happen to everyone, and it's up to us what we do with that. When I was 17 years old, I was diagnosed with cancer and had to have my uterus removed. I had an encounter with God's presence that changed my life forever on the way to my doctor's appointment where I would be told that they had found cancer in my body. I had never experienced anything like it in my life. We were heading home. I wasn't sure how or when, but all the way back then, as a teenage girl, I felt deep in my soul that my journey to parenthood would be a story that I had to tell. just beginning. Fast forward a few years, Rob and I had been married for just over a year and a half when I began visiting my fertility doctor. I spent many months going back and forth having ultrasound blood draws to track my unpredictable cycle with one ovary that is covered in cysts most of the time. I just need to talk. I think I'm just feeling really frustrated right now because my body is not, like, functioning the way that it's supposed to. It's frustrated that I don't have any control over it. I've been trying to track my cycle on, like, a app on my phone, I guess, because my ovary has been transposed. My cycle this month, like, obviously it's the same as it was last month. I hate that things can't be normal for me. This whole process is supposed to be all scheduled out and my body is not on any schedule. It's just the way. He would like for you to repeat it next week as well. So if you can come back in on Wednesday, February the 5th. Thank you should have already done your 75th minute pure in center time this morning. Do your 250 of Gonal app tonight.
finally, in March 2020, we went through the egg retrieval process and froze our embryos. We were hopeful to start our surrogacy journey then, but unfortunately the timing just wasn't right. We had pressed pause on the whole thing entirely and put our full focus on our business and traveling. One thing I've struggled with when it comes to infertility and this journey is compartmentalizing and bottling up my feelings. It's been so hard. And sometimes when things are hard, it feels easier to just ignore them. Push them as far back into your head as possible. I think God knew that the only way we were going to pursue the next step was if he made it totally obvious that it was time. With our focus being so heavily on our business, it's funny how it all worked out. One day I got an email from a couple inquiring with us to film their wedding. And in that email, they stated that they were currently expecting their baby through surrogacy. I couldn't believe my eyes. I just thought it was absolutely insane that they connected with us out of anyone else to film their wedding. Their story moved me so much and they had had an incredible experience with their surrogacy agency and their gestational carrier. It was evident to us that this was an option we needed to explore, so we did. And in March 2023, we signed on with our agency. I'm about to sign the contract. Here it goes. They told us on average, it would take about 12 to 15 months to match with a surrogate. Fully prepared to wait, we were absolutely shook when a month later we received an email that we had a potential match. After our match call, we both just knew this was it. I feel great. It's a good day. Are you a little bit nervous? You are. The peace we felt unexplainable. I'm not scared about it. After many months of jumping through the hoops of medical and legal clearance, we are officially starting our journey. We're going to officially sign it. <laughs> it's hard to put into words what it feels like to finally be here. We are feeling so many things. But mostly, we are feeling grateful and hopeful and just in awe of God's goodness. All I, want yeah. is you with me. I have had many, many hard days throughout all of these years. I've been angry at God, I've been sad, I've been jealous, and I let myself feel all of that because that's part of it. It's part of going through hard things and dealing with the aftermath. It's part of letting God mold you and shape you and prepare you. But the thing is, the more I allow myself to process and feel and heal, the more I see what a blessing it all is. It's such a blessing to go through hard things. It's such a blessing to have an unconventional path, a different journey because God knew that he could use us in this way. I don't know what comes next, but I know that God is near. In my darkest season, he never left me. So I know now, if dark seasons are coming, he won't leave me there. That's a promise and he keeps those. For now, we hold on to hope that we will see the day that our baby is in our arms.